BV specialist. Thank you so much for making the time to join us this morning. Thank you. Okay, okay. Now, I love that this is coming on, on, uh, at a very critical point where the whole world is taking a look and focusing on the rights of the girl child. And, for the, uh, and of course, most girls from informal settlements in schools are struggling to meet uh, a lot of their uh, rights. And gender-based violence is one of the things that they have been facing, particularly in the pand pandemic period. Now, I'd like you to paint a picture, Mr. Shioso, of the situation. And as I've mentioned earlier on, the blame that is often put on the police when it comes to investigation because understandably when someone faces such a thing they want justice but often more often than not this uh, does not happen could you explain to us the situation and how polycare is going to bridge that gap uh, first good morning I mean and thanks for having me and my colleagues in the studio yes and first of all allow me to convey the greetings from the Inspector General of Police mm -hmm. and what we call the rank and file of all the police officers across the country who are okay. doing a great job, beautiful job. Thank you. Uh, having said that, I mean, uh, it is true, I mean, uh, as the police, National Police Service, mm. uh, part of our mandate is to investigate cases. And um, some of these cases are cases related to uh, sexual and gender-based violence. Yes. And first of all, this is a reality. It's happening in our communities, in our homes, mm -hmm. and uh, everywhere within the country. Of course, I mean, uh, we've always tried, I mean, uh, as investigators, because mm. we train, we've always tried to do what we can, I mean, given right. the circumstances and I mean, uh, the abilities we have and the capacities. Mm -hmm. But there have been always those limitations, uh -huh. especially the nature of this kind of uh, mind violence. First of all, I mean, uh, let's talk about the capacities. I mean, we try to do the best we can because we're trained, but we can't really do all that should be done. Yes. Uh, because, I mean, uh, issues of uh, gender, uh, gender and uh, sexual violence mm -hmm. require some kind of, I mean, um, detailed investigations in terms of the forensics. Yes. Yeah. You have to go so much into the forensics because mm -hmm. mostly when it happens, you will never easily have, I mean, the eyewitnesses who can easily come and maybe back up the, the story. Right. So this an extra mind you have to go mm -hmm. all the time to make sure that we have adequate investigation, I mean, uh, adequate evidence to present before the court. And right. these are some of the areas we've been having some weaknesses. And then, by the nature of the criminal justice system is, itself, mm -hmm. yeah, because it's like a conveyor belt, as we shall say, mm -hmm. uh, one agency has to do this, to maybe take its own time, and then push it to the next agency, and on and on. Mm -hmm. So again, like this again embeds in terms of the timelines, because justice should be served in real time, so yes, that yes. it should be seen to, be, to have been served. Uh -huh. So again, when, when, you, when it takes so much time vis-a-vis uh, issues of lack of proper forensic capacities, mm -hmm. and then vis a vis again, mm -hmm. uh, somebody who's been victimized in this kind of the worst kind of, I mean, way you can maybe imagine, yeah. then you find that there's an issue with the justice yeah. itself. And that's why we're saying that, I mean, now, how can we try to come up with solutions, I mean, within our capacities to see how we can maybe uh, bring up some proper interventions. Mm -hmm. And that's why we came and sat together as officers, I mean police officers, uh, through the reform initiative, uh, sitting down, trying to ideate and see, I mean, uh, what innovations can we come up with? Yes. And some of our colleagues mm -hmm. came up with this novel, uh, beautiful okay. idea of poly care. Mm -hmm. beautiful, I mean, it basically it means police cares. Mm -hmm. what, what does we mean by that? What we mean is that, I mean, um, First of all, before even we talk about the investigation and the quality of it and maybe the justice that is served, yes. first of all, let's focus on the victim. Okay. These are mostly women mm. who are the vulnerable, the small girls who are abused, um, and small young, young boys. Mm -hmm. Mostly, I mean, that's the range of yeah. the victims we are talking about. So first of all, let's tell them, I mean, uh, we as police, and based on our mission mm -hmm. of being responsible and responsive, yes. we care for you. Mm -hmm. And do you think also that would help deal with the publicity issue whereby people are afraid to even go and, and, and report because they, of the fear of further being victimized when they're trying to narrate a situation that already makes them feel exposed and vulnerable? Will Polycare then solve that issue? Yeah, it will, it will, because basically through Polycare we are trying to bring synergies mm. uh, of capacities. Uh, we are trying to come up with a, a model which is integrated in nature, mm -hmm. bring all the players, so that, I mean, uh, uh, as uh, we are trying to attend as officers, I mean, as investigators to these victims in a responsive manner, yeah. focused on them, 
Um, we have all the other partners under the one roof. Mm. Yeah. So we are trying to give confidence, which will make it much more easy I mean, for people to have that confidence of coming up and reporting these cases, just from the way we are attending to them, yes. in that responsive and caring manner. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I'm answering the question yeah, well, yeah, but yes, yeah. I, do, yep. I, do, I do get you. Now we also have Wangeshi Washira, who's the Executive Director of, of the Center for Rights, Education and Awareness. Ms. Wangeshi, what, how would you um, say the situation is in the country in, uh, in terms of the pursuit for justice for people who are facing this, who have been through these um, atrocities and they're trying to get um, justice? How would Polycare solve the pro their problems and their concerns? Mm -hmm. um, thank you and good morning. I'm very, very excited to be here mm -hmm. and really to speak about uh, this mm -hmm. product uh, known as uh, Polycare. Mm -hmm. I think um, mm -hmm. to paint a picture of what is currently happening, we all know that uh, with mm -hmm. COVID, mm -hmm. we have seen an increase on cases of gender-based violence in the country. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I say gender-based violence here, we are talking about mm -hmm. cases of rape, we are talking about cases of defilement. As an organization that has been mm -hmm. on the forefront, uh, what we have seen from last year is that um, cases have gone up to about 53% uh, as an organization and this data when you look at it even from what 1195 which is the national uh, toll free line has also recorded is also a 55% and you also remember last year the uh, the crimes uh, the national crimes unit also did a, a study that also indicated that the, the percentage of violence had really gone up with about uh, 86%. So when you look at that data, it tells you that uh, the, there has been an increase on cases of gender-based violence in the country, but this is not only in Kenya, it's also globally that um, a lot of women and girls have gone through violence because of the COVID-19 measures that were put to be able to uh, reduce the spread of, 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 the, uh, of, of COVID. Now, for survivors that uh, we've been supporting, because an organization we've been giving legal support, we've been doing psychosocial support, we have also been doing uh, in cash uh, uh, grant to survivors of violence, is that process takes such a long time. From a survivor reporting the matter to a police station, from a survivor going to a health facility, from a survivor trying to establish um, uh, the matter uh, being uh, prosecuted, to be able to also get uh, forensic um, evidence to be able to present uh, in court. We've had matters that have stayed in court for more than five years. We have matters that have stayed in court for more than um, even eight years. And by the time the survivor goes around that process of trying to report to a police station, sometimes we've had incidences where they even report in a police station and they are further violated. And also there are cases of, of corruption that happens around there. By the time they get to a hospital, get a, uh, get a, a PRC form filled, I mean, that's already um, a lot of weight lifting that is been by, by a survivor. So for me to be able to see that um, we are now speaking about polycare, and, and this is a one-stop uh, center that then is going to provide uh, the kind of holistic approach that need to be done, I think for me it warms my heart. Because I think the, the questions that we should be focusing on are three. One, why do we have inefficiency when it comes to uh, supporting cases of gender-based violence? Second, where are the gaps? And the third question is then, how do we fill those gaps? I think Polycare then is providing that uh, solution, that under one roof, a survivor can be able to get a police uh, officer to be able to attend to them. They can be able to get a health um, uh, attendant or a doctor or a professional who has a health background to be able to assist them. Forensic evidence is going also to be done in that whole uh, roof. The other one that really warms my heart is that it is also, Polycare is also going to be gazetted as a court. Can you believe it that um, by the time those cases get to the court system, they take so, so long. So finding a, um, a court in that space, I think for me, is really, really progressive. The other thing is also around shelter, also being housed, uh, host. Uh, hosted at the, at the Polycare. Also for me, that's a very, very progress. And I think for Kenya, is also making a very, very good stride because these are things that have been done in, in other parts of our region. If you go to Rwanda, we have Isange, which again has been uh, seen as a very, very good model. And also for me, is also coming at a time that I think Kenya has made very, very bold uh, commitments under the generation equality now, meaning 
the president made this uh, uh, declaration or, or this board move um, two months ago. And finally, to see this being fast tracked and happening, I think Kenya is moving on the right uh, direction. Of course, there are a few challenges here and there, but I think we are starting at a good point. Thank you. That they would even give them um, shelter because many of these people who have been through these situations are ha these things happen at the domestic setup and they actually would need somewhere to run to. So that's really wonderful. Daniel Watsome is a GBV specialist. What sticks out to you in terms of solutions when it comes to polycare that you think uh, will really hit the nail on the head when it comes to ensuring that survivors of gender based violence and sexual violence are actually? Um, helped in terms of getting justice. Uh, thank you so much uh, for having me. And um, just to give a brief about uh, Polycare, where we have come from. Yes. Uh, because uh, I'm the chair of the technical working group that uh, developed uh, this uh, initiative mm -hmm. or this program for, for the country. And uh, the technical working group is a multisectoral, multidisciplinary. Uh, a group of uh, experts uh, that uh, moved uh, the idea from the raw form it was into what we are launching tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I'm so much excited first, the chair of the technical working group, uh, that uh, we are moving from the boardroom, uh, from many conferences and meetings to actualize this dream. That is one of my uh, biggest highlights in, in my life uh, for now. and. Um, you know, when it comes to discussions around gender-based violence or section gender-based violence, there are two things in it. One is prevention and the other one is response. Uh, that basically means that if we do not prevent occurrence of this uh, a crime or this kind of violence, then we should put efforts to respond to its happening. And that is how Polyca is coming in to respond to the effects of uh, uh, sexual and gender-based violence. Uh, the uh, polycare centers, as, as, as uh, uh, designed, will focus mainly on sexual violence uh, uh, cases because uh, that is the place where it is pinching most in these cases. And uh, we are going to have, as it has been mentioned by Mr. Shioso and uh, Madam Wangeshi, a one-stop solution to this, uh, this problem. That is, you can find all the services you need. You don't need mm -hmm. to, cr to walk across the street yeah. or jump to that other building or, or use that matatu to go somewhere because uh, that process really discourages the survivor or the victim and they, they give up, you know. Uh, I've interacted with victims uh, who will tell you that um, th the process is too tedious and as you mentioned and asked uh, Mr. Shioso, the, the issue of re-victimization mm -hmm. and also we should bring in re-traumatization, yes. you know. So the aspect of re-traumatizing the victim is too serious such that uh, the victim will opt not to seek justice at the end of the day. So the one-stop solution where the services will be provided uh, bringing in different actors, both uniformed and non-uniformed, you know, is going to be a solution. Mm -hmm. Because even we, we, we are looking at a situation where even the P3 would not be that uh, paper that, uh, you know, has been used for other purposes. It will be like uh, an online kind of uh, a P3, you know, which can be tracked by the different actors in the criminal justice system. And that is going to ensure that uh, justice is served to All both right. the victim and the perpetrator, yes. you know, uh, because discussions are too much about the survivor, mm -hmm. but also the perpetrator also wants to see justice in a speedy way. Okay. Whether yeah. they are going in or they are going home, yes, they yes. want it to come here, uh, come so quickly. Uh, so that they know their fate. Yeah, you bring, know? bring about that closure for the, the accused of, to get through the system and if they're going to be paying a debt to society to get to it or released from the process at the same time, the victims need to get through it and get closure and healing. Now, my concern, Mr. Bruno Shioso, is that this these things, most of the time we hear that they are good in Nairobi, but then they fizzle out as you move away from this 
city. What assurances are there that this is going to be something uh, that will be set up countrywide and that everyone in Kenya will be able to ensure to enjoy the benefits of polycare because especially when it comes to culture some communities do experience some of these things more than others so it is right that everyone is able to access the the new uh, polycare uh, thank you for the question again uh, let me say that I mean uh, this project of polycare mm -hmm. um, is one of its own, I mean, of a kind yeah. and uh, is enjoying some very great goodwill across board within the police, uh, across government, from the top top level of government, and you know what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. uh, going to devolve governments and all other stakeholders in terms of partners. And you can just see even the way the chairman, I mean, just, I mean, uh, the chairman is leading, I mean, um, at, I mean, a working group task force. Yes. And uh, this compromise not of police officers. Mm -hmm. Uh, serious, I mean, uh, specialists from different, I mean, fields. Mm -hmm. So there's so much great goodwill. Um, right now, we're working on a, a pilot project in Nairobi. Uh -huh. Already, I mean, uh, Nanyuka picked it up. I mean, we're doing something in Nanyuki. Mm -hmm. And we are having, I mean, you have to believe me on this, I mean, uh, requests from across the country. People are just excited about this project. Uh -huh. And they wanted the like case today. Yes. Yeah. So we are trying to push it, I mean, uh, to make the model work, first of all and then see how we can roll it further. Okay. Um, you've spoken about, I mean, um, already about the commitments, bold commitments made by the, this the president. Mm -hmm. And in it, actually, in Geneva, he said that this very model, uh -huh. yes, mm -hmm. as an anger. Absolutely. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that this goodwill, mm. first of all, um, this the intent of rolling it down, not just devolving it up to the count levels, mm. but even in the long term, we want it to go up to the station level. Mm. Yes, based I mean, uh, on, the, on the capacity she'll be having by that time. Okay. Having said that again, uh, we have another component of research, which is going to aid us, I mean, uh, do some uh, basic researches, I mean, to know exactly uh, which areas, first of all, need this poly care more than the other. Uh -huh. So as we roll it down, we shall be focusing on those areas of high incidence of this kind of cases. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, Ms. Wangeshi, I'd like your opinion on the need of, or rather the importance of goodwill when it comes to polycare, because as he has pointed out, there is goodwill, but what will that do to ensure there is a difference? For me, the, the goodwill, um, first, um, by setting up the polycare, is that a lot of stakeholders have been involved. And when I say stakeholders here, probably just one package it is that we have the police uh, mm -hmm. who are taking leadership, but we have the cell health sector that is also part of this. We have the Office of War DPP that is part of this. We have judiciary which is part of this. Well, um, the civil society has also been consulted in this process. We have also had interactions with survivors. There's a survivors network. Right. Then, and survivors network is very, very uh, critical because at the end of uh, all this, you have a survivor who has been violated. How do they perceive uh, polycare? Is it going to bring justice uh, for them? Do they resonate with it? They have also had a, um, an interaction with other um, county government, and I believe that uh, this will continue to be a consultative uh, process or a discussion process, because mm -hmm. if Nairobi is going to help us um, with the first uh, pilot, it also means there is an opportunity to be able to move this to the 47 counties, meaning right. Right. if 47 counties, if we are going to go there, we must also be able to engage the, the county government itself, for example, if there is land that is will be required. Is it possible for the county government to be able to provide that kind of uh, space? Um, health is a devolved function of the country, and Indeed. therefore, health um, as a devolved function, then they must also be able to come on board. The judiciary, another very, very critical um, component of this, because if a survivor is going to get all these services in one room without mm -hmm. them getting, you know, like today if you're in Nairobi, you have to get to maybe, um, if you're going to court, you're either going to Kibera, you're going to Makadara. Right. If you're going to a police station, you're either going to Buruburu, you're going to Dagoreti, you're going to Kiliman. By God, by the time you finish all that process, it's such a tedious process. Mm. So the involvement of all stakeholders, all the partners are very, very important. And when I say partners here, we are also looking at how do you also bring the private sector? Because mm -hmm. the private sector is also very, very critical and has also been part of this, um, I think we've been 
been able to, and Mr. Wadome can attest to this, we've gotten pri private sector that are saying that we want to be part of, um, to be part of this. I think the Nairobi uh, Lottery has been, has been part of this and saying that we want to construct the space where the children can be able to be able to get that kind of harmony, they can be able to get that kind of justice. So if we are able to get more partners coming together, I think would be very critical. But for me, even more important, I know that uh, under the generation equality, the president was very clear that uh, polycare is going to be upscaled in the 47 uh, counties. I would want to see that in the next budget, there is a budget line that says we are going to support this number of counties uh, to be able to set a polycare, perhaps 10, perhaps 20, so that then this can be able to be uh, realized. I think in your earlier question, you say that sometimes these initiatives that are very good are only in Nairobi. Yes. I think there must be a desire to be able to move them to the other counties. Mm -hmm. And I think even as citizens, we have a responsibility to ask our leaders where we are in the different parts of the country. Why is Polycare not coming into the county? Mm -hmm. What is stopping count, uh, the, 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 the various uh, institutions bring the, the, the the polycare in, in their space. Um, of course, we also know that there are counties with more cases of gender-based violence, but I think um, it happens in all of us where we are right now. I'm sure we had someone who has gone through gender-based violence, and therefore, it can only not, it cannot be left in a few counties. It need to be upscaled in the 47 counties. Absolutely. And there is a clear timeline that yeah. by 2026, mm -hmm. I think we need to have all the polycares in the 47 counties. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Mr. Daniel Watthome, uh, my, my concern also is with those who are already in the system and experiencing the challenges that you've mentioned that have inspired polycare in the first place. When this is rolled out and um, gone beyond the pilot phase, then this is going to be happening uh, hopefully, potentially, uh, across the nation. What hope do those people who have those grievances against the police or feel like they didn't get justice, what hope do they have of being absorbed into the system and maybe the situation being re looked at or perhaps it's an ongoing process and perhaps now that this is out they would hope it that they are absorbed as opposed to continuing in the most strenuous a system of old. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, before I answer that question, yeah. I want to give more weight to what Wangeshi uh, has uh, 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 indicated on the issue of goodwill. Yes. Um, sustainability of this program will depend on the goodwill. And the goodwill has already been uh, shown by His Excellency, the President in uh, the Generation Equality Forum commitments uh, that he made. Uh, so that is one of the goodwill aspects that we are riding on. And uh, the goodwill will also be required from the three arms of government, 